Good afternoon. Welcome to Project Review Committee for August 23rd, uh, 2023. We're going to go ahead and start Project Review Committee at 1.32 p.m. First off, I'm going to go ahead and do roll call here from city staff. Uh, myself, Oscar Cepeda, the associate planner. We're also joined by Rocio Mejia, our assistant planner. We're also joined by Jason Reidenauer, the assistant city manager. We're also joined by Jeff O'Neill, our city planner. We're also joined by Javier Sanchez, the engineering and project management director. We're also joined by Clayton Dignam, our fire marshal. We're joined by James Wickersham, our chief building official. We're also joined by Robert Alvarez, our field services manager. Uh, David Payne also joins us from the water utility as the water utility superintendent. We're also joined by Brianna Spry, our field service refuge superintendent. We're also joined by Joe Baeza, our field service services street superintendent. And uh, we're also joined by Sarah Torres, uh, our engineering um, from the engineering division. And that is all members from uh, staff, from city staff. With that, we're gonna go ahead and start an open oral communications. Uh, this is the opportunity of, uh, for members of the public to address the committee on any matter pertaining to project review. That wouldn't be, I mean, that's coming up. We're gonna go, we're on the agenda. No. <clears throat> okay, hearing none from the uh, public, we're going to go ahead and uh, close oral communication. With that, we're going to go ahead and start um, with uh, the first item on the agenda, which is um, PRC 2023-026 uh, for the Crestview Park uh, for the applicant and agent Mo Assad and Ken Ben. So with Thank that, let me, go, let me go ahead and I'll be pulling up the uh, map here and share it with the uh, members. As far as the comments from uh, planning, I'll, I'll be able to provide those comments. Um, What's being proposed is a uh, uh, a vesting tenant map for a residential subdivision development consisting of 46 residential lots. Project is proposed on the uh, southeast uh, corner of Putnam Avenue and uh, Olive. With Olive Crest. With that, um, the project will require uh, processing uh, the fees for the tentative map. Uh, those fees are associated as uh, three thousand and four for the map, and there's also a per lot fee of thirty nine dollars. Uh, once the map is uh, finaled, there is a fee of one thousand six hundred and seventy two dollars. And there's also a, a per lot fee of $40. Uh, this project will uh, require an environmental review, which the cost uh, to prepare this document, uh, 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 document, sorry, is actually the our consultant cost plus 10% for the administrative and also 10% for contingencies. Filing fees with the Department of Fish and Game, uh, Game Filing will be required and will be based on level environmental review. 
As far as the uh, development um, of the log, uh, they do meet the minimum requirement for the zone district, which is RS2, low density residential. They do meet the minimum size as far as, um, oops, rather, um, lot width and depth. Also, it does meet the minimum square footage of 6,000 square feet. Oh, come on. Well. But with that, we do see some lots are um, proposed as reverse corner lots. We just want to make make you aware that it, it does have a street side uh, setback of 12 feet. Um, for example, uh, lots five, seven, Is that 12? 12, uh, 15, uh, 19 uh, would be considered reverse corner lot. As far as the map, uh, it would have to, and the development, it would have to comply with our series 400 which outlines our land division process. Any landscaping proposed with a development complying with our chapter 303, also complying with our uh, water, water use. But other than that, uh, just uh, when we do develop the properties, making sure that it complies with our development ordinance. For example, our architecture articulation, meeting our setbacks, meeting law coverage of 45%. Uh, but that's pretty much uh, our comments from uh, planning. With that, I could go ahead and uh, hand it off to our uh, engineering division with Javier Sanchez. All right, thanks Oscar. <clears throat> For engineering, let me see. Uh, the one quick note is that the interior streets, they're going to, our standard is 56 feet of right of way uh, with barrier curb. Um, you do show the opposite sidewalks there, which is what our standard is. Uh, for Putnam, it's, uh, it is a 60 foot right of way. Again, just looking for 20 feet from center of the street to the face of curb uh, with an offset sidewalk. Um, let's see. For storm drainage, were you planning to repaint on site or um, trying to take that off site? Yeah, the, the plan was to uh, drain it off site. There's some. Uh existing storm rain pipe and inlets in Olive Crest. Um, the, the site generally kind of drains to the south, uh, uh, southeast. And so a very southeasterly street, everything would kind of work its way out through that street and onto Olive Crest. Okay. Let's see. And also, could you clarify the interior streets? Um, I'm showing 58, you said 56. Right, 56, it'll be, um, I won't provide those comments and, and the uh, standards. It's uh, 18 feet from center line, the curb face, and then uh, five foot landscape strip, including the curb and then the five foot offset sidewalk. So uh, we have a little bit of room there. Okay, so we'll gain a foot. Let's see, but yeah, I see the storm there. sewer and and water are available so you just tying into that uh there is a uh one thing to note is there is a project by um 
what is it? It was Lower Thule Irrigation District's planning a project through here for an irrigation pipeline. And so it may be worth coordinating with them to account for the alignment. Uh, they had proposed either going through Putnam or uh, one other option, Mike, was through the property itself, right? Yeah, we. I, I kind of plan on accommodating it through through the property. It okay. would go in between. I think lots. Uh, uh, lots forty three and forty four would give them an easement on, on on the north property line of forty three, south property line of forty four, and then take it out to the street and then be be under the road, on the middle avenue to come back towards the uh, towards the west end. Okay, yeah, because irrigation districts planning to realign this completely up into the Putnam Avenue right of way. That that'd be much better. <laughs> yeah, we'd love that. And so, I, um, we'll note that in the comments, and uh, it may be worthwhile to reach out to them. We have seen preliminary plans, but they haven't uh, fully submitted them for uh, construction. Okay, that's good. We'll reach out to them. Um, but let's see, we'd, we'd have some offsite improvements, um, just because as you probably have seen there on Putnam, um, it's like a half road. Yeah. Um, so we'd be seeing if, uh, let's see, uh, at a minimum that corner lot, if the paving can get widened in order to provide at least two-way traffic. Um, okay, all the way to Crestview? Yeah. Um, but I know you see your development's county, so we'd have limited um, jurisdiction there. But this would be helpful to get help get traffic in and out of there. Uh, but besides that, that's all engineering has, unless you have any questions. Yeah, I don't think it's on, on that extension. Um, I think that looks fine. We could definitely do that. It's just the right away is only uh, uh, to the center of the road right now. Oh, yeah. On adjacent property. Um, if if we aren't able to acquire that, you know, is the city willing to help us go through eminent domain to acquire that, that strip so we can at least line up the curbs? Obviously, no no sidewalk, but at least you know for the curb. Right. Mm. Otherwise, if, if we attempt to get it and they, you know we can't get to an arrangement, um, then then we're kind of stuck. Yeah. And then Javier on Putnam itself, there'll be no parking in front of the the homes, correct, on that street because it's so narrow. No, so the proposal is that with this development, we'd end up with the standard road width. Yeah, we widen it equal width on the other side, on the south side. So mm -hmm. there should be enough room for um, parking. Okay. Right. Yeah, so we would just, uh, east of this development is where it still remain narrow. But at, at least we'd be able to get this portion widened out. Those palm trees, um, do you guys believe those palm trees are, are of significance uh, historically? Uh, do we need to save those palm trees? Uh, you know, sometimes a lot of times palm tree line roads, like here in Fresno, Kearney Boulevard, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, they, they like to retain those palm trees. Right. Do you know, Ken, if those align within the parkway that's proposed? They would be um, within the uh, the roadway. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That... Would you know, Oscar, if there's anything that requiring them to protect those, that they'd be able to come down? Um, yeah, we don't. The, the city does not have a tree ordinance uh, in place. Um, 
of course, we try to uh, save the trees if we can save them. But if they were to be removed, uh, of course, we would have to uh, include uh, some trees as part of the uh, parkway. Yeah, we, we would have obviously add new trees. I think also like palm trees are kind of hard for residents to, to maintain. And so uh, we, and the, the root size, you can imagine that that tree right there would be larger than the, the landscape strip. And so right. uh, we would obviously put, put in new trees you know, along, along the, the landscape strip. But just want to just kind of know your thoughts. If, if we're not sure, then we'll just deal with it when we get to the environmental part. Okay. And, and with that, we could provide, uh, as part of the uh, letter that we'll be mailing out to the applicant, we could provide um, the cities. Uh, we do have a, um, a, tree, a street tree uh, list that we could provide uh, if, um, uh, if, if we do replace these trees. That way you can have what species uh, yeah. uh, could do well in, in, in parkways. Sounds good. All right, sounds good. Uh, next with our uh, fire division with uh, Clayton. Uh, essentially for me, uh, it's gonna be fire hydrants need to be placed on distance, uh, no greater spacing than 500 feet for residential applications. The fire hydrant system has to be looped. Um, no structure shall be greater than 400 feet from any hydrant um, and maintain your two points of ingress and egress. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. I think we pretty much have that. Uh, we got the well loop it from Putnam interior and back out to Crestview, so we should okay. be able to. Uh, and then uh, the other loop um, is less than five hundred feet, so we should be fine. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Uh, building with James. No comments. No comments from building. Thank you, James. Uh, next with. Uh, uh, Robert Avaris, our field service uh, manager. Uh, no comments. Thank you, Robert. Next with David Payne, our water utility superintendent. No comments at this time. Thank you. Uh, next with uh, Brianna, our, from our field services refuse superintendent. No comments. Thank you. Uh, next with Joe Baeza. Uh, no comments. Thank you, Joe. Uh, next with uh, Michael, our public works director. Uh, no essential comments as it relates to the development. Just making uh, you aware that I've seen some proposed projects in the area uh, to do with Pioneer Water Company. Uh, they're proposing the installation of an irrigation uh, delivery line to go down uh, East Putnam Avenue and make its way to a delivery point on uh, North uh, Crestview Street. Um, I've seen two plans, one within the public right-of-way staying within the road and another plan where they were proposing to go along the uh, easement access of your, I guess would be the Northwest boundary. Uh, line there of the existing parcel. So uh, I, I will make them aware that there was a proposed project in the area. Um, and so if somebody reaches out uh, to you, it's probably related to the irrigation district. Uh, okay. However, we we have had some preliminary conversations knowing that there's a potential for uh, an easement issue of trying to get a um, a large irrigation line through that property. So I'll just make them aware. Um, and as the, the project moves forward, if I have any additional details, I'd be happy to share those with you. Michael, is that the same, uh, 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 the highway you talked about, uh, the lower tool irrigation district? Yeah, I, I apologize. I joined late. So if Javier covered that, then that's great. Yeah. Um, on the park works, I only have one question or one point I want to say is along the Crestview on the back of those lots, we're going to have a block wall and then that Crestview should be um, uh, maintained by the city. Everything else be maintained by the owners, but um, uh, I guess I'd be the east side of Crestview um, should be maintained by the city. 
Javier, do you want to take that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Typically, our landscape and, and lighting districts only maintain landscaping and, and walls with major roads like arterials and collectors. Uh, hmm. When Crestview kind of can be that um, along there. Let's see. It's, it's a local road. Hmm. I mean, we could include it if the developers uh, wanted to go that route, and then just each lot, as you know, would be assessed accordingly. Yeah, they pay a fair share to the uh, L and D, and then you guys collect it and take care of it. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's on the backside, a lot would be kind of awkward for them to, you know, go over the backyard and kind of take care of that. So especially no one's no no one's facing it. Um, when I drove through it, uh, it kind of gave me the feeling of a collector road, so I didn't want to have any houses fronting on it. Mm -hmm. um, it also makes it feel like the neighbors more, you know, uh, seclusive to, to to the neighborhood and their own their own little community. So that's why we didn't face any homes on all the crest. It seems also because of the curve and the very low traffic um, tend to be higher speeds there. So, right. Let's see, because. Yeah, well, I'll definitely uh, look into that, uh, talk with Parks, and um, I'll include that comment accordingly. But yeah, as if if you are doing that along Olive Crest, then uh, this could just be an extension of that maintenance district. Okay, sounds good. Okay, Thank you. Um, with that, um, those are um, all comments from staff related to the project being presented. Uh, we will gather these comments from the department and mail them out to the applicant in about two to three weeks after today's meeting. Uh, is there any other additional questions from the applicant for staff at this time? No, I think the project is uh, pretty straightforward, uh, pretty simple. I uh, appreciate you guys' uh, time. I think we'll reach out definitely to uh, lower tool irrigation to see what they got going on and incorporate that as well. Uh, we would love to see that pipe not go through the lots. And so if that works out well, time works out well, I think that's that's the best approach. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Ken, for the application. Again, as stated, uh, we'll be mailing out these comments in about two to three weeks after today's meeting. And then if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out and we'll be able to assist you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Oscar. Thank you. With that, we're going to go ahead and uh, move along with our second item on the agenda, which is PRC 2023-027, uh, which is the Barang uh, Tentative Subdivision. So comments from from us uh, planning here would be pretty similar to the uh, previous project where the project is proposing a uh, a subdivision of uh, ten lots. Um, we would have to process a tentative subdivision map. Uh, the fees would be uh, similar here. Uh, subdivision map fees is three thousand and four dollars. Uh, there is a plus lot fee of thirty nine dollars. Once we final the map. It will be one thousand six hundred and seventy-two dollars, uh, plus a per lot fee of forty dollars. We are we are showing here, however, lots uh, not having a frontage to a street. 
the city's development ordinance does require those lots to front to a public right of way. Um, but we do have a, a in a in a code um, a section to vary from our um, development regulations, in which the applicant could uh, apply for a conditional use permit to vary from those development standards. I believe we could make make those findings as this this property is landlocked um, and, um, and it's a unique uh, size of property as far as configuration. So I believe we could make those findings if you do want to move forward with with a conditional use permit for that. Mm -hmm. Also, of course, this project will go through the environmental uh, initial environmental assessment, uh, which again, would, the cost uh, to prepare the document is, is the actual co uh, consultant cost plus the ten percent of administration fees and plus the ten percent for contingency fees. Uh, filing fees with the Department of Fish and Game filing will be required and will be based on the level of environmental review. Uh, with that, I think we could start first here. Uh, well, I already started. Sorry. Um, of course, the development is within the RS2 zone district. Um, you do meet the minimum size for the plot, the minimum lot depth and size for the plot. Any development any future development complying with our development uh, ordinance as far as meeting our minimum setback, uh, lot coverage not exceeding four to five percent, uh, garage width not exceeding fifty percent of the total facade of the of the uh, of residential units, which looks like uh, you know you won't have an issue with that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Looks looks pretty straightforward on our on our side. Again, you're also um, proposing a vesting tentative subdivision map as part of this this development. Um, of course, the land division uh, would have would have to comply with our chapter uh, 400 of our development ordinance. Uh, pretty much straightforward from our planning division. Um, but with that, we could go ahead and transfer it over to our um, fire department with Clayton. So. Um... Real quick, just looking at the layout that you posed here, <clears throat> the issue that I have is the the distances from the road mm -hmm. um, to get to these rear lots for fire department access would require these sections, basically up to pretty much the driveway, to be fire lanes. Okay, they're going to have to be marked, curbed, and then it's going to be incumbent upon the property owners to ensure that no vehicles are there or know that if we show up and there's vehicles there, mm -hmm. they're gonna get towed, even if it's on a Saturday and there's no fire. Um, that's the issue with putting them back that far away from the road. Um, and so there needs to be, if you go through the conditional use prop, prop, uh, process, we're gonna put conditions in there regarding the, the way that the layout is. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, you'll need fire hydrants, uh, kind of like you heard the last one, you're gonna need fire hydrants. Uh, the fire hydrant down and across the street doesn't count for this project for distance or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. um, and then basically uh, maintaining that these are a minimum of 20 foot going in there for the fire department access. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the, the issue is, is if, if you didn't have these two or these four and it was just these, it'd be no problem. We, we could do everything we needed from the street. But the problem is, is that these are so far out um, we need a basically a fire lane. Now, the good thing is, is that the fire lanes do not exceed 150 feet, so there's no turnaround required. We can back out of there, but the problem is still that they need to be marked and dedicated as fire lanes. And fire lanes, there's no stopping, standing, or parking. So not even, I'm going to run in real quick. You're not even supposed to do that. Technically. Mm -hmm. But situations like this create additional policing issues for the police and fire departments that when you design these things, a lot of times don't take into consideration. So, may I ask a question regarding the fire hydrants? Um, it sounded plural. Uh, is there a number of fire hydrants? So, the project needs to meet the minimum fire flow. That is a minimum of one, but could require two. So, it could require one, say, for example, on the entry, and then one down here, potentially. And fire lane minimum with 20 feet. You mentioned curbs. Is curbs? I thought I heard curbs. No curbs. We don't. We. I don't have anything to do with the curbs. I'm talking about the uh, the access points here. 
Yeah, you just want them marked. They, yeah, they, well, yeah, they need to be marked. They can be they'll, signage. They'll, they'll be signage, painting, yeah. that kind of stuff. Through the conditional use permit, it may be something that's recorded on the property so that they're aware of it when the properties transfer that this is, you know, a restriction on the property that they're purchasing. Mm -hmm. Because it has to be maintained. There's going to be, I mean, if we go out and there's deterioration or damage or something like that, it's going to be incumbent upon whoever owns it to make the necessary repairs because it's a fire lane and mm -hmm. has to be maintained. So there's additional considerations when you do that, when you design something like this in there. We don't like fire lanes to be our driveways. That's not what they were intended for. So um, an enclosed loop fire lane? Uh, uh, if you have more than one hydrant, it has to be looped. If it's more than one hydrant on the same line. Now, theoretically, you could do, and you'd have to talk with the water department about, depending on where the valves are and everything, but theoretically, you could potentially put, like, say, one here and then run another line down here. So they're both just single lines. It would be two connections, but it would be a, they would be single line hydrants. It wouldn't require looping that system through to another, mm -hmm. another water source. Mm -hmm. Minimum fire flow requirements? Uh, it's going to be in Appendix B of the California Fire Code. Uh, we're currently in the 2022 edition. Because you're increasing the density, the number of properties that are there. So. Uh, thank you, Clayton. Next with uh, engineering with Javier Sanchez. All right. Thanks, officer. Hey, Gilbert and Aaron. Hey, hey, how you doing, Javier? <laughs> good, good. And yourself? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, from engineering, it'll be pretty straightforward. Uh, the layout uh, or the comments we had prior will still apply in that that limited right of way at the throat of the cul-de-sac really only allows us to, to do what you propose there. Uh, and then you transition into the new standard, which is the offset sidewalk with the landscape strip. Um, the only thing would be on the, I know it's a maintenance headache, but uh, the code um, really doesn't allow the like sidewalk right up to a wall or fence. And so in, where you propose a seven foot sidewalk, uh, it'd be reduced to allow at least some landscaping there. Is there a minimum width sidewalk for sidewalk width? Mm. Typically, once you go right up to a fence or wall, it's uh, five feet. Five feet, uh, not four feet for accessibility. For sidewalk, you mean? Yes. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry, I was mentioning landscaping width. Uh, but yeah, for sidewalks, it's typically five. <clears throat> um, because this is a short run and try to maximize the landscaping, we could do, you know, say four feet of sidewalk and then the remaining strip, some landscaping. Landscaping behind the sidewalk, correct? Between the fence and sidewalk? Uh, right. Yep. Okay. Uh, but besides that, uh, just the extension, excuse me, the extension of utilities through there and and then street lights, I think we just it probably triggered like two at most. Javier, does the city own their own street lighting system? No, that's still all Edison's. Okay, so we work with Edison on that. Uh, right, so you'd provide us a street light layout and then we'd send it over to uh, authorize that design. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, besides that, that's all engineering has. Thank you, Javier. 
Uh, next was buildings. Uh, James. No comment. Thank you, James. The single family home, right? Yes. Next with uh, Michael Knight, our public works director. Uh, no comments this time. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Robert Alvarez. Oscar, they may have to step away. Uh, they're in the process okay. of uh, a traffic plan study, so um, they may have to step away. I think Robert's out. Thank you. Next with David. Is that no finished? comments. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you, David. Next with uh, Brianna. I was just looking to see if she stepped away. Oh, they're in the, the same meeting. Uh, sorry, we overlapped. Um, I believe the only comment we had from Refuse is this is going to require uh, one three bin enclosure to service um, to service the the area. And we can follow up with the written comments as they're as they're issued out. But the uh, internal review was one three bin enclosure would cover the service. We're talking like a city standard three bin. Yeah. Uh, trash, recycle on organics. Correct. Is it possible that each of these homes could have their own cans and pull them out to the street to be serviced? So they would pull them out to Pioneer? Uh, or in the cul-de-sac, or do you think there's not enough room to do that? I don't think there's enough room with all the driveway approaches you have in there and uh, the number of cans you'd have on that street, it would be difficult to service that. Uh, we can we can give it a consideration uh, when we sure. provide our okay. comments, but under initial review, it, it was going to be difficult to to service. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I appreciate the consideration. If, uh, if it's okay, if we can maybe follow up and see if we can coordinate directly with you folks on that, that'd be great. See if we make Absolutely. some work. Absolutely. Thank you. And I have a quick question also. If we were able to make it work to get a trash refuse area, um, is it possible for the trash collector to come and service through the cul-de-sac? Is that acceptable? I'm sorry, can you repeat that one more time? Um, trash can be collected through the cul-de-sac as opposed to the Pioneer if we were able to make a trash refuse area work within the cul-de-sac yes. design? Yeah, the cul-de-sac's not private, right? It'll become a city street. Correct. Yeah, so th if that's the case, then yes, we can. Okay. And just, thought, I know we have city standards, but just off the cup, minimum size? For the trash enclosure? Yes. Uh, we have a new standard. It's, um, I apologize, yeah. I don't have the number off, off the top of my head, but it's the three bin trash enclosure is a, is a city standard. We can get you, get you a copy of that. Yeah, but, it's but, like 28 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, and with landscaping on each side, three, yeah, then three feet of Depth is probably about 10 or so, right? Uh, six, six and a half feet. So okay, and then you're going to have an apron too. So, yeah. Talk about a good size. That yeah. includes the from back of block wall to uh, front, front of the six and a half feet. Okay. Thank you. I can get other members of the company. That's okay. I mean, we can get online. Yeah, I don't want to mm -hmm. burden you. That's not mine. Okay. <laughs> it's a secret, secret uh, city standard. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. the next, uh, Joe. Step out. Yeah, it looks like that's, that's all. Comments from staff uh, based off the project presented. Uh, as stated previously, we'll gather the comments from the department, mail them out, and also email them to to the applicant in about two to three weeks time around time frame. Uh, is there any uh, additional question at this time? Yes, staff? I do. Uh, going back to the CEQA, do you think that's possible? That might be uh, exempt based on infill, or I mean, presumably you guys got to look at it a little bit. Yeah, we, we, we could try to. Um, Make it work within an exemption, mm -hmm. of course. Um, 
uh, there's going to be some parameters or some findings to make to to try to make it work within a uh, an exemption. Of course, we'll take a look at that and then we'll provide that in the letter. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And best case, that would work. Worst case, if we have to file through C, uh, C uh, what's the timing? Um, generally speaking, it, it's dependent on each project. Um, Jeff, can you give us a little ballpark on that from your experience? Uh, the city will probably it'll take a month or so just to get a consultant on board to do the sequel work, uh, followed by at, at least a month of preparation, uh, and then a twenty at least a twenty or thirty day public review period. So a minimum of ninety days, um, possibly longer. Okay, and is the city open to? Um... By and CEQA, our, our own CEQA consultant, or the city has an established list uh, of CEQA consultants, oh. and it doesn't deviate right. from that. Right. Okay, and I think we have three consultants. Three, four. Okay. Um, any other questions from the applicant? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank All right. you. Yeah, Sounds good. No, thank you. Thank you for the application. And uh, again, hopefully we're able to get this to the finish line. Um, and again, uh, we'll we'll get you all those comments in two to three weeks. Okay, great. Thank Thanks you very much. Everyone. Thank you for your time. That, just, that doesn't show the landscaping on each side or the back. Okay, very good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Planning. Next. Uh, All right, guys. Thank you, sir. Well, appreciate it. Absolutely. Okay. Next, we have PRC 2023-028 for uh, the applicant here, George. Let's pull up the uh, project here. Right. So we have PRC 2023-028, and the applicant is proposing a multifamily residential project consisting of uh, three units within two structures. The property is located on the northeast corner of Plano Street and Henderson Avenue on APN 248-080046. The property is zoned is in the RM1 low, very very low density residential, I'm sorry, low medium density residential zone district and has a general plan at, uh, use of low medium density residential. Uh, for this project, um, we're gonna go ahead and start with our fire department. Um, so for this, the biggest issues are gonna be a fire hydrant's gonna be required. Um, the, no structure can be greater from 400 feet and the distance is 500 feet maximum between hydrants. So a hydrant will be required there because you can't use the one across the street, unfortunately. Um, you have to maintain a minimum 20 foot of roadways and then that driveway is more than 150 feet. And so it requires a turnaround. Um, and on the approach, you mean it'll be around the side? Yeah, so okay. when we come in from the street, gotcha. mm -hmm. um, this distance measured from the street Yes. To here is more than 150 feet, so it requires a turnaround, and the turnaround has to comply with the fire code. Okay. So, um, so that's the biggest issue that I have with this layout right now. Now, if there was another access point to where it went through, mm -hmm. or uh, or something like that, then yeah. Okay. So, but that's the biggest issue with the layout that I see right now is. And it doesn't really look like there's room to even accommodate one of those turnarounds. Right. Um, you know that the the minimum there's a there's two styles. There's a 120 foot hammerhead, and then there's a, a basically a 70 foot alternative. But it requires kind of two tails. It, it goes out this way and then comes down, so they mm -hmm. can back in and go out. So, um, so ideally, we want to see if we could get unit C up over this way next to unit A, and then have two approaches maybe. One from each side, or no? You, uh, that would depend on engineering. I'm not going to speak for them, right, but for me, that would work. Uh, or um, potentially, if these were shifted down and this one went over here, 
and there was enough room to to do like an entry here and then okay. a hammerhead turn around to come down. Um, and then another alternative is taking unit C and stacking it and then that's gotcha. that. And, and then you, fire hydrant. If you do that, you might as well do a four pack. Right. That was that was you. Uh, that was on the docket. Fire hydrant doesn't matter where it goes, right? On which side? On yours, because the frontage is not more than three hundred feet. Yeah, it, it we'll place it okay. where we'll tell you when we determine that. Uh, because, like I said, if you go to a four pack, you're going to have an FDC because it'll be a different sprinkler system. Mm -hmm. um, and so there'll be placement of the hydrant and placement of the FDC so that they're within fifty feet of each other. Um, you can see there's one directly catty corner. Right. It's catty corner right there's over one there over by there. that blue truck. Yeah. Right. So see how that one's kind of placed on the corner. That was, you know, just there. So we may, depending on the layout of the others, we may shift yours one way or the other. It just depends on what the final proposal right. comes in. So we kind of wait on placement right. until the end. If it is a four stack, it's still just one hydrant. It still be uh, as long as it meets the the flat fire flow okay. requirements. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And over there, that's a blue top. So you're looking at a minimum of 1,500 gallons per minute. So Theoretically, with a sprinkler building, you should be able to, with the credit you get for a sprinkler building, you should be able to meet that fire. Okay. Gotcha. So, do they need that parking? Well, there's, there's new state laws um, that you could uh, utilize, in which uh, for new residential developments that are within a uh, half mile of public transit, um, local jurisdictions cannot require parking. Mm -hmm. Of course, we could um, you could suggest it, um, and any any proposed parking, of course, will evaluate per our development standards. Right. So yeah, you could be flexible with your parking. Also, with the um, common open space. Yeah. This zone district does not require common open space. Um, it does require private open space, which you do show which here. We have, right. Um, the only the only issue is you don't meet this minimum here. You're showing seven. It has to be at least ten. Okay. So you could stretch it out. Adding another three feet to meet that minimum ten by ten. So it's ten on the front and ten on the back. Uh, for the private open space, yes. uh, ten by ten. Yes. Uh, with on the back side, it's showing ten, right? I mean, on the it'd be on the Plano side of my bed. Yeah. So once unit A, um, a and B, mm -hmm. uh, you're showing ten here. Yeah. But it's not fully. Oh, right there. I got you. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Because of the way the units set. Right. Right. Uh, but you do meet the minimum, uh, which requires minimum 200 square feet per uh, per unit. Uh, also, you can see it does have that minimum, but again, depending on where we... Uh, well, we were trying to shoot for the fourplex, but without stacking it, and it just wasn't really working out with parking. I think. Oh, yeah, right park, now, parking, again, um, per, per the latest state law, I think it's AB 20... Stacking it might just be the easiest. If I'm not mistaken, um, yeah. Um, but let me see if we can verify the, I think there is a bus transit stop. I think it's over here, right? The one in front of the uh, North the, Plano? Yeah. Of the oh, park. yeah, there is. Yeah. There's an apartment still, right? North, north of him? Oh, north? Where did you put that? Yeah, I think there is one right in front of that big complex. Yeah, I think we verified it last time, but yeah, if there is one within a half a mile, then we could utilize that. Um, so I, I think we did check down on that last time. Yeah. Um, with that planning, um, you do meet the minimum setback. Uh, you don't need lock coverage. Um, the zoning is multifamily. Uh, we do we are showing landscaping buffers here from the interior property line. Uh, so yeah, so the new layout will have uh, additional compensation. Okay. With that, we could go ahead and continue with building, with James. Hello. So uh, I don't have any comments the way it's laid out now. Um, the 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 walk there that Gary showing um, isn't required at this time. Uh, if you do stack uh, three or more units together, you would have to have a walk from the from the sidewalk, okay. and um, and then any three or more units would require um, accessibility um, uh, adaptability accessibility. 
Yeah, that's all I got. Thank you, James. Next with engineering, with Javier. All right, uh, for engineering, uh, both Henderson and Plano will need um, concrete improvements. Let me see. You know, as you can tell, there aren't any. Uh, I need to look in and see what the ultimate right of way width is because our circulation element um, has Plano as our major arterial and Henderson as a minor arterial, uh, which could require quite a bit of um, dedication in those areas, like a wider landscape strip and then a wider sidewalk. Uh, let's see. So I'll, I need to look into that a little bit more, but I'll detail it in the comments that will provide you. Another item is that a portion of this um, development is in a flood zone. So uh, it's in the AH flood zone. So there is a base flood ele elevation that's established. So anything that you build would just have to meet or exceed that height requirement. Uh, as part of that, just uh, during the building permit process, there'd be uh, a surveyor to verify that forms are placed at the elevation required prior to pouring. And then afterwards, we'd, uh, he'd come out again to, to confirm that the slabs are uh, meeting the elevation that they need to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when we got all that rain, I think it was all uh, this Plano side that was uh, all flooded in over the curb. There's a storm drain there on Plano as well, but it was just... Uh, right. Yeah, and yeah, all these, so yeah, you do have that drain inlet there. Uh, sewer and water both exist there, so it sh should just be an extension to them. Um, so I'll nail down what the ultimate right of way weights will be there for Plano and Henderson. So there's there's actually no sidewalk on going either way, and then some of the curb existing now is busted up. All that has to be kind of repaved, in other words, re report. Right. Okay. Right. Let's see what, and then. Uh, besides that, um, it may require a street light on Plano, but it looks like you may be okay on Henderson. So, yeah, that's that's the extent of comments from engineering. Thank you, Eric. Mm -hmm. uh, next, with our public works director, Michael. I think Mike stepped away. Um, his comments were, can you, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. His comments were, um, they could be served by residential cans as far as the refuse service. Thank you. Next with Robert. No, he stepped out. Okay. Yeah, it looks like that's all all comments from staff. Um, again, we'll provide this letter in two to three weeks. Okay. Uh, turnaround. Um, is there any additional questions from the applicant? No. Problem. Thank you. Uh, thank you, George. Um, again, we'll get this letter on two to three weeks. Okay. Uh, do you have any additional questions? No. Oh, good. Well, thank you for the All application. Right, thank, thank you. Have a good one. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, with that, um, we're gonna move it along with our last item on the agenda. We should be on, what? Yeah. Is uh, PRC 2023-029 uh, for the, uh, uh, forgive me if I uh, mispronounce it, uh, the Haas uh, Multifamily Residential Project? The Haas, right, that's correct. Thank you. They, they can't hear you. I don't think they can hear you. Can yeah, you we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm, just, I'm just pulling up um, their project here real quick. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and share my screen here. Why can we get them to see us? Okay. So the applicant is proposing a tenant improvement to the existing uh, uh, 5,290 square feet building for a multifamily residential project consisting of a total of six units, uh, two be six two bedroom units, one bath apartment. Uh, the subject side property is located at 329 South A Street. The property's uh, zoning is DRM2, which is our downtown medium density residential zone district. It also has a general plan land use of medium density residential. With that, we're, we're gonna go ahead and start with our fire department with Clayton. Uh, essentially, the project shall comply with all the latest applicable codes. Uh, it's going to require a fire hydrant to be placed based on distance, uh, as well as it's got to be within 50 feet of the FDC. Uh, it's going to require a NFPA 13R monitored fire sprinkler system. Um, and the FDC, if the, if the site can accommodate, the FDC should be no closer than 40 feet to the building. Uh, but if it can't accommodate, we'll we'll look at placement as proposed and maybe recommend a secondary location uh, as well as uh, making sure that the hydrant is within 50 feet of it. Uh, it needs to meet the minimum fire flow requirements uh, from Appendix B of the California Fire Code. Currently we're in the 2022 edition and uh, any fire hydrant placement will be approved by the fire department. Fire extinguishers shall be installed to comply with the currently adopted edition of the California Fire Code again 2022 and address numbers shall be posted on the building, visible from the street, installed numbers shall contrast with their background, as well as uh, identifying the individual units. Excuse me, did you say yes. that we have a fire hydrant existing at the northeast corner, northeast corner of Lopez and South A Street? Uh, Is it on the same side of the street? No, it's not. Okay. So a fire hydrant across the street won't be considered as part of your project to meet fire flow or distance requirements. So your FDC will have to be within 50 feet of a functional hydrant. So your project is going to require an additional hydrant. Probably somewhere on the corner of the property. Yeah, it, it'll it'll either either be at the corner or it can be at either end of the property, uh, like like alley side or uh, a little bit further down the street there on the um, is that the A Street side, South A Street side. Um, it it really is going to kind of depend on when you start designing the uh, fire sprinkler system, where the riser and where the FDC are going to be placed, um, and then we try to make sure that we place have you place the hydrant within 50 feet of that FDC. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next with our building division, James. So, oh. Uh, most of my comments would be during plan review, but uh, keep in mind that uh, we, we would need uh, firewalls between each uh, unit. Um, and then 
any any uh, units with three or more uh, combined roof, which you have here, would have to meet uh, uh, Chapter 11A of the CBC for accessibility. Uh, but we can we can uh, uh, look at that more in detail during during plan review process. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, James. Next with uh, Javier Sanchez uh, with the engineering. All right. Thanks, Oscar, for engineering. Um, all the public improvements are there. Um, depending on the valuation of your permit, uh, we most likely just need to make the corner ramp accessible. Um, but besides that, sidewalks there, uh, street lights are also there. Um, so yeah, our only comment would be just getting accessibility or getting that corner curb ramp to be uh, accessible to standards. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, it is accessible, but not to current standards. Right, correct. Right. Yeah. That's all I had there, officer. Thank you, Javier. Mm -hmm. uh, next with um, David. Uh, I don't really have any comments at this point. Thank you, Thank you David. Um, would you be able to answer field services as far as the uh, trash service, David? Or is, um, I'm not sure if Mike Mike's back on or not. If not, then we'll provide their comments on, in the letter. Um, yeah, um, Oscar, I believe um, when we conferred about this project, right. a triple bin enclosure was going to be required. Yes, I do, I do recall that. Um, and as far as the location, um, again, um, our field services uh, superintendent would, would verify if the location of, if the proposed location would uh, be adequate or, or meet their code. They'll provide that in, in their comments. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is planning. Um, as far as the use, it is a permitted use uh, within the zone district. Uh, looks like we're retrofitting an existing building. We're not expanding the floor, uh, the floor area. Um, as far as the um, one item that I do see is uh, we are providing common um, open space, uh, but the code does require minimum of 150 square feet per unit. And out of that 50 square feet, Per unit has to be a private, private, uh, private common area for for each unit, which uh, the the site plan does not identify uh, a private common area for the residential units. Uh, I'm sorry, how many square feet is required for each one? 150 square feet. Okay. Of private and of private area. A common open area, and out of that 150, 50 okay. has to be private. Okay. So it's a total of 150, but 50 of that is That's private. private. Okay. Private for each unit, correct. Right. Just a 10 by 5. Right. As far as the development complying with, with our, our Section 20204 of our development standards, again, we're not expanding the floor area here. It's all as a tenant improvement. Um, again, parking, uh, we, if, if it is proposed, uh, it's going to have to comply with Chapter 304 of our development code. Um, 
of course, there's, there's new state laws that you can utilize um, for uh, reducing the parking or not requiring a parking for the project since it is a new residential development uh, and it is within a uh, half a mile of a bus transit. Okay. <clears throat> Any landscaping uh, proposed uh, complying with chapter 303 of our development ordinance? I'm sorry, chapter what? 303. 303. Yes. And again, we'll provide these comments in a letter to the applicant. Okay. Uh, outlining uh, these department's comments. Um, but other than that, if it, any changes to the facade complying with our downtown design guidelines. Okay. Other comments are pretty standard for our development order. All right. Any questions at this time from the applicant for staff? Anything, Todd? No, no, no. no I think uh, we are providing uh, more parking than required at one and a half spaces per unit. So that's kind of uh, shown on the site plan. So I think we should be good there. Uh, yes, again, um, local jurisdictions cannot require uh, parking if, it, if, the, if the residential development is within a uh, half a mile of uh, transit. But again, if, if the applicant would like to propose it, then uh, we will evaluate for our section 30410 of our portable development ordinance, making sure it complies with that section as far as design and uh, standards for, for parking stock. Landscaping. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, private space. Okay. Sounds good. Um, no additional questions from the applicant. I think. No, no, good. no. We're good. Thank you very thank much. Thank you guys for your support. No, thank you for the application. And as stated previously, we'll get you your letter, the uh, PRC letter with each department's comments in about two to three weeks. And again, I would like to thank you, and hopefully, we're able to get you to the finish line on your project. Sounds good. Thank Sounds you. great. Thank, Thank you. So much. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thanks. With that, um, that was the last item on the agenda. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and end today's uh, project review committee meeting at 2.39 p.m. I would like to thank everybody. Have a good day. Thank you.